Hi. <laughs> and just to prove that they're nonpartisan, they also published Wanker, the Kevin Rudd story. <laughs> and yes, Crikey really is read by real politicians. Whatever you say, Jeff. <laughs> um, this comment that Joe Hockey made about Crikey was at a, a politics and technology forum that I attended in Canberra last year. And in the interest of fairness, I do have to say that after he said uh, Crikey is often the best source of political news in Australia, he did go on to say, but they're often wrong. <laughs> And yeah, sometimes Crikey became the news. Um, Crikey's style was always, is pushing the envelope, is trying to get out the stories that they don't want you to hear. So often there are legal threats, often there are legal battles. Um, this story was about um, a $25,000 defamation payment that um, Stephen Main and Crikey had to make. Um, when they made a claim about Senator Nick Borkus, this was before my time, but I believe that they implied that he was a drink driver. Um, they also had a rather hefty payout to um, radio presenter Steve Price, who was, a, a, I believe, a, a shock jock in New South Wales. So um, Crikey could be an expensive operation at times. As I said, Crikey was often, um, often got stories from insiders and it often had people writing for it anonymously from the inside. This one is kind of an interesting story. Christian Kerr, who was a Liberal Party insider, wrote anonymously for Crikey for several years under the pseudonym Hillary Bray. Um, and strangely, I don't exactly know why, Stephen Main outed Christian himself, <laughs> causing no water for Christian and a large falling out between those two gentlemen and I'm not actually, uh, I think they didn't speak for some time, I don't really know how that ended up. This is one of my personal favourites. Uh, Andrew Bolt is a conservative a newspaper columnist who writes for the Herald Sun. Um, he got wind of the fact that um, Crikey's editor Jonathan Green attended an election night party in November of 2007 in which a John Howard piñata was ceremoniously destroyed. This was the birth of a new expression, the piñata left. Yes. <laughs> Uh, this was one of Crikey's highlights or, or lowlights, depending on, on how you feel about it. Um, the annual uh, Walkley Awards for Excellence in Journalism in 2006 were slightly overshadowed when a Sun Herald uh, writer, Glenn Milne, got a bit drunk, um, went up on stage while Stephen Main was speaking. Uh, I think he took a swing at him and then pushed him off the stage. Strangely, he didn't lose his job over that. I don't know exactly what you have to do to get fired. <laughs> so, yes, that, oh, wow. I, I swear I'm actually really good at the Wii. Yes, that's the end of today's news segment. Now for human interest. A shaggy dog story. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes! I screwed up my joke. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the actual project. When I came on board with Crikey in May of 2008, I was the first staffer hired just to work on the web. And what they wanted to do at that time were basically start having a website. Because what they had was an email service that was being delivered once a day to paid and unpaid subscribers, and they had a pretty dinky website which was just used to promote that email. Frankly, the website sucked. Um, and they'd realized that the subscription model online was something that you might be able to maintain if you had a really good product, but you weren't really going to grow. And they knew that the website had the potential to grow both in terms of audience and um, advertising revenue. So they really wanted to build a proper website website. Uh, Web 2.0 interaction was something that they wanted to consider really seriously as well. They done, they made the radical step of actually allowing people to comment on stories, and that, that really was a big thing for them. Um, but they wanted to take it further. They wanted to push into blogging. Um, they wanted to look at um, news aggregation. 
um, or link journalism um, as a way to extend Crikey's reach beyond uh, its specific Australian focus to bring its readers the best of the web, provide value to them by you know, pointing out good stuff that's happening all over the place. And of course, um, Web2 interactivity is also good um, from a web analytics point of view in that you get more mileage out of your pages if you have people coming back and commenting, being part of discussion and so forth. And also, if you're blogging and linking out to people, it's more likely that you'll get links back and, and all that kind of good stuff. And yes, um, to get a little bit technical, they had a CMS that made me cry. Um, it was, I've, I've dealt with a lot of terrible CMSs because that's what happens when you work in publishing. But um, this was a really delicious um, custom CMS built on the .NET platform, um, which had been sold to them by a company which did CMSs for you know all kinds of people in all kinds of industries. They had to really mangle it to try to make it into a news publishing platform, and it really wasn't doing it particularly well. Pardon? Um, part of it is on WordPress. It's it's still a work in progress, but it's moving to to WordPress. So yes, it might sound really strange, but a news organization needs to be able to instantly publish and update their website. <laughs> the uh, CMS that uh, Crikey was using when I started didn't let you do that. And they wanted to reduce dependency on their IT provider. Um, there was a legacy of technophobia and real lack of technology within Crikey. When Stephen started it, he would type up his stories, give them to a mate of his who was you know, tech savvy, who would put together the email. That was the level the bar was set at, and they hadn't really taken it much further than that. Um, so they felt that they were incredibly dependent on their service provider, and that made them nervous. So the brief that we had, was retain and modify the existing site where possible. This is not because it was a great technological joy to work with, as I've just explained. It was basically because it was they knew it, and it was the devil that they knew. So they wanted to go really slowly when they're looking at a new solution to be sure that they were ready for it and they were going to be able to deal with it. They wanted to reduce costs, like everyone. Um, they had money to invest, but they wanted to invest it wisely. And the things that were, the ongoing costs had to come down. They had proprietary technology that they were paying for. They had expensive hosting they were paying for. They had a service contract they didn't feel they were getting value for money. All that they wanted to deal with. Yeah. And yeah, comfortable migration. I covered that before. They weren't very confident. Um, they hadn't gotten to experience a lot of CMSs you know, that did the right things. So they really wanted it to be a gentle transition. And for the readers as well. They'd gone through um, a web design which had actually lost them readers before I joined them. Um, when they were trying to show people that they had free content on the website and really make a big deal of that. But unfortunately, the way this was signified in the web design process was to put little um, lock icons next to lock stories. So unfortunately, people arrived at the newly designed website, had a look at all these little locks and went, oh my god, there's locked content. I hate you. I'm not coming back. So they didn't want to do that again. And um, time to market. They wanted a really slow, comfortable migration, but they wanted it to happen yesterday. The, the reason for this was basically um, the nature of the news market being what it is. Um, it has to be constantly changing. There were also a lot of um, media um, operatives who had been laid off from Fairfax, laid off from News Limited in the market, wanting to do something, whether it's start new ventures and so forth. And Crikey really wanted to be first to market with what they thought was going to be a unique product in the market, which is an Australian-focused blog network and news aggregation service. So there was a real pressure there to try to be first to market. And they wanted measurable success, um, not only to give them an idea of what um, readers were responding to, but also um, to be able to sell um, success metrics um, to advertisers. They just weren't doing that at the editorial level at all when I joined. Um, metrics were really just being looked at in terms of the email, and they were really just looked at in terms of um, advertising. So I really tried to get the editorial staff and the bloggers looking after their own metrics and actually taking an interest in that. 
I'm not even going to talk about the archive because, um, yeah, they need to get all their content online and um, they have previous um, old computer systems and they have some crikey archives still in Word documents. There's going to be a lot of um, migration work that needs to be done there. How the hell did I end up back here? Yay. Am I going backwards? Hi. I'm really good at this. I seriously, I am going backwards. I just wanted to show you a puppy again. Do I have to use these? Press the space bar. Press the space Thank you. Oh, wow. Okay, where was I? God. It's actually worse than I thought. Recapping, just briefly. <laughs> For those who came in late. We're so close. Yay! So why did they want to go open source? The hard work was done when I arrived. I admit that. They already wanted to go open source because they had a perception that the technology and the labor would be cheaper. We know that, you know, as these things work out, yeah, maybe not, but there are definitely benefits. They wanted to regain control of their CMS. They wanted to escape vendor and provider lock-in. The notion that you could take an open source CMS, WordPress, whatever it may be, and actually move to an, a new IT service provider without a whole bunch of pain really appealed to them. The selection process, through my contacts in open source, I already knew a bunch of people that could do this stuff, um, whether it's WordPress guys, whether it's Drupal guys, whatever. So there was a pool of people I knew I could trust. Um, sat them down with management, and an interesting thing happened. We talked tech, WordPress versus Drupal. But one proposal was written in English. <laughs> this was Jeff's presentation to us. And it didn't talk to them about stuff that they didn't know or care about or understand, like technology. It actually talked to them about politics and what Crikey was actually doing. Um, and Jeff, during that process of pitching, he was also looking at business and social issues. Um, this was basically what decided it for these guys. It wasn't really the bottom line, and it wasn't about, you know, what's the SLA, anything like that. He addressed the fact that there was total fear of technology in the organization, that there was a lack of staff buy into the technology because they didn't understand it and they were scared. Um, and he addressed the fear of service lock-in, which was a really big thing for them. One of the guys that came in to speak to us from a really good organization, um, the, man, the corporate person from Crikey basically said, oh, I got a vibe like our current service provider. And that was enough to, to put them off. Um, right at the outset, Jeff said, um, if Crikey's preference was to hire an internal IT person to maintain the website rather than actually outsource it to him. He would actually help them hire someone good. And I think that really impressed upon them that it's like, I'm not just trying to sign you up to a service contract for life. So I think they really appreciated that. Um, and they had a fear of, of being one of many. But the fact that Jeff spent so much time talking to them about Crikey, what Crikey does, what Crikey could become, I think that, that, that just that really human thing of making them feel special actually worked. Yeah, like me in the, the Wii remote, okay. <laughs> Jeff's going to talk about the, the install, the technical stuff. Thank you very much. How am I going for time? How am I going for time? That's good then. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so it, it's interesting. The major social issue that I had to deal with when working with the Crikey folk was Stockholm syndrome. Um, you know, the uh, what happens when you get taken in as a refugee and you start to identify with your captors, and uh, after a while you start defending them, and those sorts of things. They they kind of just started to to get beyond you know the worst of the Stockholm syndrome. Um, but I had to like you know, reinvigorate their passion for what technology could do for them. And it sounds ridiculous because, yes, they are an online news magazine, but they're very, very fearful of how the technology stuff all works out. But that's because, you know, basically they got 
captured by evil people and turned on, on themselves and stuff like that. So, so to, to do the, the go fast, go slow, go fast, go slow thing, we split up the project. And the first thing we did was Cracky Blogs, um, which I'm pretty sure is now Australia's largest blog network, which I'm giving you all an opportunity to heckle me and tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, maybe. Edu blogs is international, and you know it's like lots and lots of people with their their own blogs and stuff like that. See, I found all of these tricky ways to say, ah, that's not a blog network. Ah, that's not Australian. Um, it's all how you define the question, really. Um, but yeah, and and the problem with that is that we never really intended it f intended for it to work out that way. Um, the original plan was to have six, only six, and that's it. Um, but they got very, very excited. So we started off with uh, two of Australia's most uh, popular sophology and politics bloggers. Uh, you guys might know these, these two, um, Paul Bludger and uh, Possum's Politics. Um, sorry? Sophology is the study of um, uh, uh, polls and uh, poll statistics, which sounds dreadfully boring, but gosh, it's hilarious if you're a political geek. Uh, like Sarah and I. Uh, and these two are really, really funny. They do heaps of cool stuff, and they're extru like amazingly geeky about um, doing poll analysis. And the, and the cool thing is, that it's kind of like, um, if you guys were watching, what was it, 538? Gosh, was that it? Whew. I'm getting over the whole election thing now, and I'm forgetting you know, the website that I was reloading every single day. Um, uh, they're kind of like that, but based uh, on Australian politics, and they did bits and pieces of US stuff. But um, uh, Paul Bludger in particular was very proud that he called the Australian election months and months and months and months and months ahead of anyone else in the main media and all this kind of stuff. And every now and then they throw shit at the big uh, newspapers and even the big polling companies because they show how badly they interpret their own polls. Um, so they're heaps of fun. Um, f uh, former federal Democrat Senator Andrew Bartlett with a saucy photo. Um, he st he uh, started blogging on uh, blogs at Crikey. Um, and we added some bits and pieces for the Crikey team so that they could start getting uh, comfortable with WordPress and comfortable with blogging because you know when you have a website that you can't actually update without sending an email to all of your subscribers, you can't kind of just throw some stuff on the web and see how it goes. Um, so they needed some experience with that. So up the top you've got Team Crikey and uh, little first dog cartoons of all the Crikey staff. Uh, and then we had, uh, so, so Crikey's cartoonist is first dog on the moon, so he had to have the first blog on the moon. Um, and that's his blog and it's totally bonkers. He blogs about animals and, um, you, you know, like, animals that are recently born in zoos and you know he goes on bushwalks and then does a whole blog post about particular animals and their attitude to Australian politics and um, yeah like he, he is totally worth the crikey subscription just for his cartoons um, and Jonathan Green the editor who insisted that he have a plain frog and Jonathan Green in a typewriter font because he's like an old ink fingers guy um, and, uh, and that's when we hit the, oh my God, blogs are awesome problem. Um, when we first started working on this, I said, look, you know, no, phase one is, is, is crikey blogs, right? Don't be tempted to start shifting stuff en masse from the current website over to crikey blogs, because that stuff will come later and it'll all be okay and we'll do that. Just because you, you know, suddenly have power in your hands doesn't mean you should put everything on crikey blogs. Well, that kind of failed. <sighs> There's now 13. There's actually more now. Um, and basically what it comes down to is the, the, the difference between a content management system, which is, you know, abstracted, crazy, idiotic crap, and publishing. And WordPress is totally focused on publishing. It's a really beautiful publishing platform. That's what it's all about. That's what they focus on. When it comes down to, to focusing on what the user wants to do and uh, having boundaries for how you approach the usability issues, that's what WordPress is focused on. Um, so the immediate things that they wanted to do was give uh, Guy Rundle, who is uh, their uh, uh, troll uh, who runs around the U.S. during the election, uh, doing live reporting from the U.S., uh, he had his own blog. Um, they had a U.S. election blog because they couldn't update their U.S. election page as regularly as news was coming out of the U.S. election. Um, and uh, because they've always got a little bit of criticism about not covering any sports kind of stuff in their uh, email, they started a crikey sports blog as well. 
um, which, because the crikey folk are all Mexicans, it's all about AFL and, you know, I don't know. Um, but um, beyond that, they've got a whole series of other stuff about the, the weirdest combination of things. So there's uh, Literary Minded by Angela Meyer. She uh, writes, uh, she does uh, 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 cr book criticism. She writes about um, literary uh, reviews, all this kind of stuff. Um, she actually writes for, um, what is it, Bookseller and Publisher, which is one of the main industry magazines and stuff like that. She's really, really hilarious. Very, very young, uh, one of the only female bloggers on the site, which was kind of a win for those of us who were sort of rooting to have, you know, non-old white male bloggers on the site. Um, speaking of old white males, Ben Sanderlands writes a blog about the airline industry called Plain Talking. And, you know, niche blogs is like the whole cool thing about why publishing with blogs is such a great thing. And that's completely nutty, the blog. It, and 100% about airline industry and, and, you know, all the embarrassing things going on in the industry, it's very odd. Northern Myth, uh, Bob Gosford uh, is uh, in the Northern Territory and writes about all sorts of issues going on with the um, uh, intervention. Uh, croaking rooted about uh, health and environment, uh, their group blogs. Uh, and this is why the front page sucks. Um, you, you, I'm not, I'm not going to switch to the, to the website now, but um, the front page was originally designed to have six blogs on the front. Um, and, you know, so it gives this beautiful overview, a summary of the, the latest post and a few others here. You know, now it's got like 13. So you kind of scroll, 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 scroll. So we have to do something about that. But we put this nice little animated thing on the top there. And you can see all the blogs have their own little icon and they show sexy stuff on them, things like that. Um, minor point here, when you go to a client who relies on advertising as part of their funding, don't run flash block or ad block when you're doing demos. Whoopsie. Hey, that's cool. Where are our ads? I think they got lost in the tubes. <laughs> um, so now Crikey loves WordPress. Uh, how many of you uh, blog? Lots. How many of you blog with WordPress? Any version? There's people who didn't have their hands up about blogging and did have their hands up about WordPress. WordPress is a blog platform. <laughs> it's about blogging. All right, okay. Um, WordPress is a, is a really simple publish engine, publishing engine. It's no nonsense. It's not massively detailed. It's not a huge, chunky CMS. Um, but it has a beautiful admin and authoring interface, particularly WordPress 2.7. It's sexy. Um, uh, sweet plugin architecture, lots of batched insane plugins. Um, the front end is crazy malleable. There's heaps and heaps of different themes. And uh, you can actually make WordPress not look like WordPress. You know how many CMSs you kind of look at it and you go, that's Drupal because it's boxy. WordPress is not quite like that. Uh, and it has an awesome community, huge community. Um, we recently had uh, WordCamp Australia in uh, Sydney. And we had about 60 people there from all over the place. Um, for those who are not quite familiar with WordPress and how it all works out, WordPress.org is the downloadable PHP blob that you can run on your own web server to have your own blog. WordPress.com is the hosted version of that, uh, a service provided by Automatic. Um, Matt Mullenweg, the guy who started WordPress uh, as a fork from B2 Evolution or something, um, he, uh, he decided that he wanted to, to support the project and create a company. Um, and hosting blogs ended up being the way to go. And so he employed a bunch of the cool WordPress people um, to work on WordPress.com. And WordPress Moo is actually the thing that led to WordPress.com. It's a multi-user version of WordPress. Um, so you can jam a whole bunch of WordPress blogs into, uh, into one hosting environment. It's, it's compared to normal WordPress, it's a little bit crazy. Um, Crikey Blogs is kind of a little bit weird for WordPress Moo. Um, WordPress.com is a mass hosting environment for lots and lots of individual blogs. Um, so each blog is different, has a different author. Um, edgy blogs is similar. You know, you sign up, you get a blog, you start blogging. Um, Crikey blog is not quite like that. Um, it's also not a fully integrated news site on its own. It does actually have quite separate authors, quite separate blogs. All Things D um, is the... Um, um, the Wall Street Journal's uh, technology website um, run by Walt Mossberg. And this is actually a WordPress Moose site. 
Uh, and the coolest thing about this is that Walt writes all of his articles on walt.allthingsdigital.com and Cara writes all her stuff on cara.allthingsd.com uh, um, and it all gets integrated in this beautiful front page. Um, but it's, you know, like single publishing system, no people outside the organization writing for it and stuff like that. But this gives you a really good idea of what, what kind of things you can do with WordPress and how malleable it is. Um, so Cracky Blogs is commonly branded, but um, separate publishers. So a quick tour of some of the changes that we made to make it work. Um, common defaults across all the blogs, fairly boring stuff. Uh, it means that bloggers can, we, we can build a blog and they have analytics and feedback and all that kind of stuff out of the box. We don't have to do any work to make that happen. Um, readers are not publishers. Um, you can't sort of sign up to have your own blog. Um, publishers are trusted, so they can pretty much put everything that they want up on the website and they're not locked down. Whereas with WordPress.com, they have to be very, very cagey about JavaScript and embedded stuff, all those sorts of things. We don't really care about that. They can. The authors can do what they want. Um, business requirements, and we had to do single sign-on with the main website, and the main website is this horrible hunk of .NET grossness. Um, so we had to provide a whole bunch of uh, ways for people to log in to that. Um, some optimizations for like purely sort of structural things. Um, when you have a WordPress move site, because every blog is kind of logically different, it's loading, say, you know, jQuery.js from each separate blog. So you're loading heaps and heaps and heaps of different, um, different uh, assets from lots of different blogs. So we made it so that because everything's pretty consistent, um, you you load all of the, uh, the the files from the same location. So that as you're going through Cracky blogs, um, you have heaps of stuff cached, which means your client is downloading less. It's much faster. All that sort of stuff. Um, However, there's heaps of stuff that we didn't optimize at the beginning. Um, the best way to start is to start hosting without over-optimizing at all. Um, you just put it up and see how it handles the load. So there's a, a bunch of conventional kind of optimizations that people do with WordPress. Uh, Supercache actually writes pages to the disk and then serves them directly off disk. We're not doing that. We're serving straight out of the database. There's no memcached, so there's no um, caching of uh, PHP objects as, uh, as things are going through. Uh, no PHP cache, that's not doing any kind of code acceleration or pre-compiling or anything like that, and no CDN. Um, we wanted to make sure it could run raw and then give uh, us heaps and heaps and heaps of room to optimize after that to see how the server went. But, you know, the server's entirely fine thus far. Um, and there's a bunch of cool things that I, that I built that I need to ship um, based on the theme and things like that. The last one there is quite cool. Um, it's a customization I've made called WordPress Eats Media Wiki. Um, I can't stand Media Wiki, but I quite like the WordPress platform. The WordPress platform actually makes me feel as if I'm not writing PHP, which is the best kind of PHP platform to have, really. Um, hi, Rasmus. Bye. Um, and uh, WordPress Eats Media Wiki basically takes over everything smart about Media Wiki. Um, it jams the WordPress theme uh, in between your Media Wiki pages. Um, it takes over authentication. It like completely lords itself over MediaWiki, so that you can actually put MediaWiki on a server and not actually actually have to think about MediaWiki at all, which is lovely. Um, open source makes simple things easy and hard things possible. Uh, every now and then, I do uh, funny reports for them because things go wrong. So this is my spiky report, which is a very early on uh, early report that I did for them. Um, because they're not technologists, they're very, very passionate journalists. They don't know about all this stuff. They don't know how to save money. They don't know how to use technology wisely. They, they don't know how everything fits together. So um, I wanted to give them sort of an impression of um, what happened over the, uh, the in initial period that we had it up. So this is when we had the first presidential debate. We had like a live blog, all sorts of stuff going. So heaps of people were hitting the site. Uh, and it was all okay, no problem with it. Um, then we uh, set up uh, media.cracky.com.au. Um, the office manager called me and said, hey, you know, we, we, we do heaps of bandwidth that we're serving out of our Australian um, uh, colo, and uh, it costs a bucket, and I was wondering if there was anything that you could do without migrating our entire website tomorrow to save us some money on bandwidth. And I was like, hmm. 
I suppose I could just throw up an Apache proxy on our US host and do it that way. And so five minutes later, as I was talking to her about how it might work, I had it set up on the server in the US and said, OK, next time you send the next email, change www on one of your images to media.crikey.com.au, and it will load from the US instead of Australia. Um, so this was the first time it happened with a first dog cartoon. Um, and then this was the week that they did the changeover. Um, and they quite enjoyed getting a report that included POW and BIF. Um, so this was pretty sweet. You can see that you know the server started being used more, serving more files, all that kind of crap. Um, yeah, so 15 days we did 28 gigs of raw bloggy goodness, which was not really that interesting. It was you know, the, the first couple of weeks it went up. Um, but yeah, on one day we saved 4.5 gig of um, cached images being served from Australia, which is lovely. And at the moment, they're actually saving um, between three and five grand a month um, on their uh, hosting in Australia, which pisses off their current provider, which makes them happy. Um, so the future of what we're going to be doing, uh, WordPress 2.7. WordPress 2.7 is awesome. Who hasn't upgraded to WordPress 2.7? Rusty, you just built your blog. <laughs> um, upgrade because you know WordPress suffers from the usual kind of PHP as horrible problems. Um, this is the, the dashboard for 2.7. It's rather different to what you see if, you, if, you, if you're using the old stuff. Um, it's really, really neat. You can move stuff around. Um, they have very particular workflow needs, so this ends up, ends up being really, really helpful for them because um, each of them uh, do slightly different things when they're going through the publishing workflow so they can move stuff around. Um, and this is one of the points that I made during uh, WordPress, WordCamp Australia. Um, there's all this kind of, oh my god, you are changing your software. How will we ever survive if you change your software? Um, kind of reaction to WordPress 2.7. But basically, if you put it in front of real users and they start using it, they love it. They love it. The changes are really fantastic. So yes. Um, and this is good advice for anyone who's involved in doing open source projects. There is always a vocal minority of people who are quite skillful at posting to mailing lists, but are unable to do anything else consequential in their lives. Um, and their opinion is generally invalid. You don't have to care about them. Um, WordPress move 2.7, they're currently stuck on 2.6. Donica is the guy in Ireland who uh, started working on uh, WordPress Moo. He started doing it for um, blogs.ie, uh, and then he got hired to run it on uh, uh, wordpress.com, and so he's turned this kind of ugly pile of hacks into something that scales really, really nicely. And uh, it actually works really, really, really well now. Um, my first experience of it was on blogs.gnome.org, um, and it's, uh, it's really, really good. It's not so great for you know, just setting up a few blogs for your family. Usually, you can just do that with a couple of WordPress installs. But if you have, for instance, uh, an internal blog site, or you want to set up a number of blogs for people in your company so that you have some outreach and Web 2.0 goodness and things like that, very, very cool. 10. Um, blogs.crikey will never be done, ever. Um, and every now and then they call and say, hey, we want to add three new blogs. I'm like, are you prepared for your front page to look like complete crap because we're adding hundreds to them? No. So yeah, there's going to be more and more and more stuff on blogs.crikey, which is pretty cool. Um, and it, and it's, got, it's actually got really, really good reviews. Lots of people are very impressed that blogging is actually starting to have an impact on Australian politics, where we've seen it have such a huge impact in the US. Um, I may or may not be working on replacing all of the rest of their crap. So watch this space. That's all I can say, unfortunately. It's sad. This is Sarah's blog, if you want to find out more about Sarah. This is my blog. And I mentioned everything here except Donna's uh, global economic crisis failure picture. I didn't mention her, so I mention her now. Thank you. Any, any questions about um, publishing, WordPress? Um, I have a question. Oh. How do you operate a Wiimote? 
Um, I'll provide a personal tutelage <laughs> later. <laughs> Gus. Gus, I know you're on MT at the moment, right? Don't be scared. I remember how painful it was being on MT, and I've just done a lot of work on WordPress. And, and you tweet like every day about how much pain it is. You're on Stockholm Syndrome, my friend. WordPress is your friend. Yeah. Um, without wanting to pour poop on those people, because many of them are smart and good people, um, yes, they are batshit insane. Um, it, it, I mean, it, ultimately, when it comes down to it, it is a CD pile of PHP, and um, but you just need to make sure that all of the components are running really, really nicely. So it requires optimizing at the MySQL level, um, you know, opcode caching, um, uh, object caching at the, P at the WordPress object layer. Um, then you can do page caching at super cache, stuff like that. But Crikey Blogs has been running for ages now without any of that at all. Um, the real website will actually need some of it. Um, but it doesn't take a, a particularly beefy machine to run it. WordPress.com doesn't run on too many beefy machines at all. It's quite surprising. Sorry? Yeah, CPU is cheap and, and WordPress is not CPU bound anyway. Thank you for your input though. Zonka. Um, do anyone um, put up their hand next who is not also a journalist? Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's right, you're a flack now. I'm sorry. That's quite a long discussion, but um, there's a few bits and pieces. Um, the default uh, setup for MySQL in every distribution is cock. Um, that's the first thing. Um, I would also introduce you to Brian Aker and Stuart Smith and the MySQL hackers here. It's always wonderful at LCA. You can just say, yeah, actually, that's their problem. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, th that ends up being a MySQL thing, and, you can, and that's easy enough to fix. Plus, you can, run, you can run WordPress against multiple databases, all that sort of stuff, too. Um, yeah. Yeah, I will. Not responsible for the HTML in the email, which is going to be improved. May, may or may, may not be in the process of being improved. <laughs> um, and uh, the authentication system is going, may or may not be completely ripped out and destroyed. <laughs> you, you, you know that scene in uh, Office Space where they take the printer out and <laughs> give it what for? Um, that's what we'll be doing to the old CMS. Yes. Yes. There is, in fact, one of the um, thing the the uh, plugins that we're using. Donico, the guy who wrote WordPress, Move wrote, um, and it's oddly called Sitewide Tags. But what it actually does is it takes every published blog across the entire network and publishes the post, the tags, the categories into a single blog, and usually that's the tags blog. Um, and the cool thing about that is that you have one blog that you can use as the sort of main feed for the site, because it has all the right content in it. Um, it corrects the links so that it actually links through to all of the right blogs. But you also have a single blog that has all of the tags and all of the categories. So you can relink across the entire network from that single blog. That's a really, really clever little plugin that he wrote. Not so much. Oh, um, just go to it and click on the thingy in your um, uh, address bar, and yeah, so you can subscribe to the whole thing. Uh, 
Are you, are you upgrading in place or? Oh. That's awesome. Um, Blogs.gnome.org has gone from 2.4, and um, don't tell any of the GNOME hackers, but I'm going to have them guinea pigging 2.7 pretty soon as well. No. Blogs, Blogs.gnome has um, about 120 blogs now. And uh, all of the GNOME dudes have imported their history from Advogado News Bruiser, which we used to run for blogs.gnome, which is a steaming pile of Python. Um, amazingly steaming for, for a pile of Python. Um, and, uh, and their own blogs. And so they've like imported buttloads of crazy stuff. And it's generally been pretty cool. Hard to test, though. Um, so maybe catch up with me after, and I'll give you some hints and tips about how to test doing the upgrades. This is actually really easy. Um, at the moment, because Crikey Blogs is such a small site, there is a single quad CPU machine. I know that sounds terrible, but you know, there's, they didn't want to pay for lots of machines when they were first starting testing this stuff out. But it's a single machine. It's running uh, Ubuntu uh, Hardy, um, all of the normal Ubuntu packages for things like MySQL, stuff like that. Um, not massively reconfigured, but you know, Apache and MySQL, have, I've given them some hard love. Um, that's pretty much it. So there's, there's no multiple machines or anything at that point. Once the once the main site may or may not migrate to something that looks like WordPress, there will be more machines in the mix. Nope, not at this point. Yeah, so yeah, so I mean that is a single machine and it's performing fine. But then uh, Cracky Blogs doesn't get that much uh, traffic. But it's it's also doing the media cache as well, and that gets a buttload of traffic. Uh, and that's I mean that's just Apache proxy and cache and stuff. One or two. Um, I am not at liberty to say. Uh. They, from when they just had the original Crikey site to when they launched the blog network, they pretty much doubled their traffic. I don't know what it's doing now. Blogs does 20% of their traffic now. Um, and you can probably get some sort of information from this, but this is very early on. This is like the first 15 days, sort of. Um, oh, no, no, this is a little bit later than the first 15 days. That will give you some sort of insight a little bit. So it's not a huge amount. Um, there's a bigger one here, Sarah, um, which we made for these poor people. Last question. Better be a good one. No pressure. Yeah, there's actually heaps of um, Aussie designers who are really quite clueful about WordPress. Well, um, I just had a conference with about 40 of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, the WordPress Australia organization is in the process of booting up, uh, and they will be a, a fantastic place to find people. Um, oh, rock and roll. <laughs> um, and, and, and in fact, interestingly enough, the WordPress Australia website is built with WordPress multi-user, which sounds odd, but it's also using BuddyPress, which is the uh, social network platform that's built on top of WordPress Moo. Um, so members uh, sign up and you know you can have buddies and groups and you know you can tweet at each other and I don't know all those kinds of things um, but you'll be able to find people uh, there's gonna be sort of things for tagging yourself with stuff that you are good at I don't know um, so that will be a good place um, and then uh, I, I, Twitter on, oddly enough is actually a really good place to find folks in general yeah Yes, yeah. The other thing, just as a brief answer, because that was an awesome hint, there is a cool theme called Sandbox. 
and by default it looks dreadfully plain. It looks like, you know, circa 1992, I don't know how to use the font tag. Um, that's how plain. Um, but the, the really, really clever thing about Sandbox is that it generates heaps and heaps and heaps of CSS classes from all of the metadata um, that WordPress provides. So if you go to my blog at uh, Be The Signal, uh, and then go to it again in the next hour, you'll see that it actually changes color every hour, and I'm doing that purely with CSS. Um, and uh, I haven't changed anything about the Sandbox theme at all, but mine looks very, very different to the main Sandbox site. Crikey Blogs uses the uh, Sandbox theme as sort of the basis for what we did. Um, and uh, if you give uh, a designer the output of Sandbox and say, have a look at the CSS classes and then figure something out, if they're a good CSS designer, they will blow their load and then make a really good site. And that's it for me. Anything from you, Sarah? No, okay, thank you very much. <laughs>